Hey, welcome back guys. Today we are going to be concentrating on this rear subframe. There is a whole lot of work to do. We're going to be getting M3 axles and trailing arms. Uh, they're going to be on their way here soon, but until then, we're going to be installing all of these reinforcement plates. And these are basically where all the control arms bolt into, the trailing arm, diff, shocks, all these because all this unibody metal is pretty thin and can't really hold up to 1,000 horsepower and tons of abuse, so they like to rip out. And actually, there's already some ripped out ones on the car already. Then we'll be working on the bushings. We have nice solid mounts, a little bit of poly, and control arms. Then we got to weld up our drive shaft uh, loop, get all that going. And underneath here where I started taking out some little stuff or I had some free time the other day. And getting up underneath here, you can actually see where this stuff rips out. So this right here is what it should look like. Bolt comes up through and gets into there. Gets some more light. And looks nice. Over here, as you can see, I guess that's what happens when it fails. That might have already been giving us a bunch of bashing that we've already heard. Who knows? And I think one of the other mounts up there looks the same. So for this, I'm going to beat this metal back out, put the pin back in, and then weld in the reinforcement plates. And supposedly that should be extremely strong then. But now to get to that, I need to get the brakes off, get the brake lines out, the rotors, get all that crap out. And then this will stay... Maybe I'll just leave it connected, or maybe I'll just take it all to pieces. I don't know yet, but we got to get the whole thing out to get the bushings in anyways. So that is today's project. We will see how far we're going to get along with that. Hopefully it doesn't take more than four hours. Uh, famous last words. But we're going to go ahead and get started on that. got the subframe out and it is ugly finally took a lot of pressure finally got it out with our m3 subframe we're actually going to be retaining that and that and that and we're just replacing it with the trailing arms and the axles you can see that was sheared off in there so i gotta get that out gotta get that out I'm going underneath of the car to really see the damage. So, good one right there. 
bad one right there. That one was all sheared there. And yep, yeah, that one was good going up to the front. So I'll have to weld back in that one right there, weld in that one right there. And then the plates actually just go right over top and gets all welded in. Same thing going all the way around. Oh, it's messing with the drive shaft loop location. That'll be going up there. So yeah, it's moving right along. I'm gonna take a break, grab some dinner, cause I'm starving. And then, yeah, we're just gonna keep moving right along. It's gonna be a process of getting all that subframe cleaned up to be good enough to weld. But we're gonna keep working on that and check back in a minute. All right, update time. This is not fun, but it's an absolute necessity that we have to do. So I have all my areas prepped for my reinforcement plates. And I just went ahead and just tacked in some of the plates right now. That way they're just held in. It's actually going to work pretty good. I have the mounts I got ripped out, uh, welded back in. Then I have these plates tacked in here and over here and over there. And then, yeah, afterwards I need to clean up these welds once it's completely done and make sure it's nice and flush and flat. But overall, not a huge project, not super hard to do, but it will take you all night. But this is something that has to get done because that mount and that mount already got ripped out with about 200 and some horsepower. So once we throw over a thousand horsepower at this, I feel like it'll rip out everything. So complete necessity to do. But overall, it'll make the car a whole lot stronger, which is pretty sweet. Then I've been working on the subframe too. Got the subframe mostly cleaned up, got mounts shaved off, getting it all ready to put this diff in. The garage is an absolute mess because there's so much rust on this car. But not much we can do about that. I'm gonna keep plugging away at it and I'll check back with you in just a little bit. All right guys, finally have all of the body reinforcement mounts done. I just have a couple left to go. These go on the subframe and then these tiny ones go up front. And then this right here is actually goes on the subframe as well. That's for the two 10 millimeter diff conversion. But everything else you can't really see is all up there. Done, welded, looks good. Little boogery because there's so much oil and crap down here and I couldn't get it all off. Tried, but I'll go ahead and make sure I grind it flat. It'll look good. These mounts are pretty, pretty solid though. I was hitting on them, trying to move them around and they feel really good. And so that's that. We'll keep going. We'll continue on cleaning them up and then start working on the subframe. All right. All right, we finally got the subframe all out, got it prepped up, got our new mounts welded on it. This will be for the 210 diff that'll be going in it. See, I can actually do good welds if I properly clean it, unlike over there. So yeah, uh, we're gonna keep going on this. We gotta put these new subframe bushings in. Uh, I gotta get these out, which is going to be the hard part. Uh, there's a few tricks people told me to do. Uh, some said there's this drill method. So I'm going to try that first, try hitting it, we'll heat it up. Uh, we'll try everything, we'll see what works. Going to get to it. So, drill method wasn't working at all. So on the forums though, uh, they just said heat them up, melt out the bushings, and then bang it out. And that seems simple enough to me, so that's what we're going to do right now. And yeah, here we go. Now it's a fire.
And we are back. That actually worked a lot better than I thought it would. Basically, I just lit them all on fire first, then gave it a couple taps on the middle for this metal one right here. The first metal bar just came sliding right out. Then I lit them on fire again and let it sit for another 20 minutes. Then just took a hammer to the outside of the metal ring and that slid out right Oh well. It's actually pretty easy and worked out really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and get these new bushings going in right now. update got the subframe painted all up and put it back in the car and now we're getting ready to work on the diff right here let me get some good lighting all right there we go back up looking good all new bushings all new everything I got these control arms on it and then we are going to work right now on getting this diff up in there it's a little bit heavy, one man job, but shouldn't be too bad. We're gonna go ahead and get that thrown in there. All right, finally, after some convincing, got the subframe mostly back together now. As you can see, right there is our Rally Road E36 uh, conversion bracket. This is so we can have our two 10 millimeter diff in here which should be pretty darn strong. I had to just round out these holes for the brackets a little bit to be able to get the bolts in. Then got the new control arms in, the rest of it in. It's all subframe in. And now I'm just waiting for my M3 axles and the M3 trailing arms. Those are supposed to come in tomorrow, I believe. And as soon as we get those in, I'll be able to finish up the rest of it. And then the whole rear end will be done. The custom drive shaft should be here in, I think they said like a week and a half or something like that. Uh, the pistons are supposed to get here in the next week or two. And there's quite a few more things to do. Let's see. Okay, get that block to Lincoln filter, which we can't do until that diff, or until the pistons come in. And then we can send it all out, the engine. Hot side, cold side, coolant lines, Terminator X, oh, calipers, we can do that whenever. Control arms, got them in. Train horns, lights, engine trans, all kinds of good stuff like that. And then, so that kind of makes me stop for tonight. I don't really have too much else I can get going into. Really can't do anything until I get the engine back. Can't make any of that, can't do any of that. Can't do any of that. So we're gonna take a break till tomorrow and we'll catch you tomorrow. Hey guys, we're back. It's actually been a while. It won't seem too long in this video because I'm just gonna run it on the same video, but it's been like two weeks. We had some issue with our shipping on the trailing arms. We got the axles in, but now we just got the trailing arms back in today. Here they are. I just gave them a quick coat of paint we put some polyurethane bushings in them, cleaned them up. These are the M3 trailing arms for the rest of our conversion. While I was waiting, did a few little things. Seats back in. Uh, we hooked up this nice speaker system. Actually bumps pretty loud. Uh, what else did I do? Made a mount for the Holly Terminator X system. 
We installed a train horn just because. Dinkered around a few things. Uh, guys sent us a rear view mirror and said put this on. So we went ahead and just put it on. And then we picked up some tires. We got some Nitto 305 45s to go on the 18 inch wheels. And they're kind of obnoxious. They're really big and I honestly think that they're way too big, but we're gonna see if they fit, see if we can cut out anything, see if we can make them work. We got them for like under half price, so can't pass that up deal. And then, so now we'll continue on with the video of installing the rest of the subframe. done with this whole rear end on this car this has been a pain between stuff not coming in when it's supposed to come in stuff not fitting all kinds of craziness of course everything's got to be custom and here's the look with the tires on of course it's going to need nice alignment but got a pretty good amount of poke going on this is the drag tires that we're going to be using coming around to the back all really done we have a nice rally road e36 the 210 millimeter conversion for the diff that all worked up really good we got all of our chassis reinforcements put in the m3 rear axles i did all new brake lines and calipers and everything to go along with it yeah. but that's one more piece done we got a whole lot more to do and we're going to figure out how much right now. So how are we doing? Where are we going? Okay. So down here we got the calipers and that's all done. All kinds of other crap. Nope. Didn't do that. Didn't do that. Or that. Or that. Or that. Man, we have 39 days now until Cleves and Cars Bradenton. Luckily, I believe we have everything bought needed for the car. So we should have everything in shop now. Uh, engine update on that. We have that coming this week. The block is coming, so we'll be able to start building that going on from there. The transmission is supposed to come in this week at Liberty Gears, so that'll be nice. 
and Logan will be up here. He'll be delivering the block and he's going to help me put together at least the bottom end because I don't want it to blow up the very first pass. Not that I don't have faith in myself. I just rather have a professional that's done it a whole lot of times. And it's an update on that. Hopefully, if it comes in soon, maybe by this time next week, I'll have the engine built. Transmission should be here and we can start putting stuff in. It's not an unrealistic deadline of 39 days. I mean, if we had every part, I bet you in two weeks, 14 days, we could have the whole car done and running if we hadn't everything. But I still think by April 1st, we should have it all done. I don't know. We'll see. Beautiful intake right there. But hey, we're going to go ahead and end it off. Have some dinner. See you guys later.